member from Australia. I'm a meatwear designer. And one of the questions I get asked most often is, would I create a video to explain top-down raglan shaping garment construction? You work from the top down in one piece and it's fantastic. You don't have to seam afterwards. Once you've finished, you've finished. You can try it on as you go. So you can see if it's fitting. You can see if you'd like to make it longer or shorter at the waist and the sleeves. And it's really motivating to see it in form. It's like a little cardigan or garment most of the way. So you feel more inspired to finish it. I like raglan sleeve shaping. I find it suits my body and it also suits a bit of size fluctuation. So, you know, if I'm hovering around a couple of different sizes, I find the same garment will still fit me, which is great. So this one here that I'm holding up is a little bit smaller than the one I'm wearing. And that's great. That's for layering in a different way. So you can choose to size down if you want it a bit more fitted or up if you want a looser garment. It's quite flexible in that way. So yeah, I'm hoping in this video to demystify the construction of this garment and to inspire you to knit your own and teach you a few techniques along the way too. So while we'll be working on this cardigan I'll be demonstrating with this cardigan. You can still apply the same techniques to a raglan pullover. So this is the same design, but it's the pullover version. So today's workshop is based on the Celestia cardigan pattern, which features these eyelet patternings that you can see. And there's a cardigan and a pullover option. However, in this tutorial, I decided to leave out the eyelet pattern and just create a plain version for myself because I already have two of these cardigans, one in another color. And I just really wanted to make myself a nice, simple cardigan in some lovely yarn that I had. The Sections will be chapterized, so you can easily skip ahead if there's a section that you don't need to learn about, or if later when you're knitting yours, you want to remember how to make short rows, you can just skip to the short row section. So the sections will include uh, talking about gauge, short row shaping, which is much easier than it sounds, and I have a really simple technique that I use, the German short rows. And that's what creates that lovely distance between the top of the back and the front here. So you've got some space that makes your garment sit nicely when you're wearing it. It's more comfortable. So definitely worth learning how to do that. Then I'll also show the increases I use for this particular garment. They're pretty simple increases. I'll show you how I put the sleeve stitches on hold and then work the front and the back and also picking up stitches for the, the bands, the button bands. So there's quite a few techniques in addition to just showing you along the way how it looks and how it works. And as I mentioned, it's quite a magic way of making a garment all in one and very satisfying. So hopefully you get a lot from this tutorial. So first things first, you'll need to knit yourself a swatch to determine how your gauge is looking. I knit a nice big swatch here in the yarn I intend to use for my Celestia cardigan. And the yarn is a little bit different to the original yarn that I used. So even though I have the same needle size, I found that my row gauge, the number of rows per inch, is slightly tighter. So there's more rows per inch in this yarn than the original yarn I used. That's fine. The stitch stitches per inch is correct. So I'm going to just continue with those same needles and make a little adjustment as I'm knitting the garment by adding in a couple of extra rows to accommodate the shorter row gauge. 
that way I can choose a size that works for my, um, I can still cast on the number of stitches for my size. I don't need to adjust my size. So there is some flexibility that once you've swatched, you can make some adjustments to the pattern to suit yourself or your gauge. Okay, so I've started the pattern. I've knit the collar instructions I cast on for my size and have knit the, the ribbing. I'm making the garment, the cardigan version of this garment, not the pullover. If it was a pullover, I would have joined that to work in the round and that would be in a circle. However, this will be a cardigan. So the, this is the front, this will be open. The raglan shaping uh, is formed by increases at the fronts and then for the sleeves and the back. So I have also worked the setup row, placing stitch markers for the raglan shaping. So during the yoke section of this knit, I'll be increasing stitches here for the fronts to make the fronts wider, here for the back to make the back wider, and here for the sleeves. So these will become wider eventually enough for sleeves to be picked up and knit from, which I'll show you. So to begin now, the next step is to create short rows back and forth across the back to create some extra depth for the back. This will mean that the front will sit a little lower than the back, so it'll sit nicely when it's worn, as I will demonstrate. Okay, so now I've purled across the back of the work and am ready to start my first short row. I have stopped at the place indicated in the pattern for my size and will bring the working yarn to the front of the work, slip that stitch and pull the yarn over, creating a DS or double stitch. Later, I'll come back and knit those two legs of the stitch as one, and that will form a very neat short row where you won't see a hole in the work from turning it. These are German short rows, my favorites. So I'm now knitting across to this point and I'll do the same thing. I'll turn the work and keep knitting back and forth so that the depth is increased at the back and graduates towards the front. While I'm here, I'll show you the increases I'm using for this garment as well. So we have make one left, a left leaning increase and this is worked by picking up yarn from the row below, place it over to my left needle and use my right needle to work the back of that now stitch. and I've created an increase. So this marks the raglan line, this stitch here, and I'll work a right leaning increase on the other side. So this direction of the increase will head to the right. So this time I pick up that bar from the row below, again, place it over the left needle and this time I'll knit into the front of the stitch. So another stitch increased. And I'll knit across. And repeat those same increases. So we're on the first sleeve here. Left leaning increase, knit into the back of the stitch. and the raglan stitch and a right leaning increase moving into the front of the stitch. 
can hear lots of noise of posties out there and the dogs are barking. <laughs> so I'll just pause until I get back to the next set of increases. Okay, so I've knit across the back stitches, ready to do the first increases along the raglan line for the back. So it's a left leaning increase again. Bring that yarn over the left needle, insert the back of the stitch and make that extra stitch. And here for the right leaning increase and keep going across the sleeve stitches. And I'll demonstrate that one more time and then turn the work for the short row. So left leaning increase. The raglan stitch. And the right leaning increase into the front of the stitch. Knit two where indicated in the pattern for turning for the short row and turn the work. So we'll be purling back across these. So the yarn needs to come around and under. So I will bring this around to create that double stitch and under ready to purl across those stitches and I'll just purl across the increases that's an increase stitch there and they will look quite neat in the garment okay so I've purled across from that short row the double stitch here across the sleeves, back stitches, sleeves, and have come back to near that first double stitch. So I will knit across, knit, well, purl, excuse me, purl across, purl those two stitch legs. So that double stitch is actually one stitch and I'll purl them back together as one stitch and get to the point where I'm ready for the next short row, which is here. I will turn the work, bring the yarn behind, slip that stitch over, pull the yarn forward to create a double stitch. And I will work across this row according to the instruction and the pattern for my size. This particular row will be the same as I demonstrated before. I will do raglan increases on both the fronts and the sleeves and the back. And so I've completed that row, knitting across, and thought I'd show you what the double stitch that I created on that pearl side looks like when knitting and how I work that. So now I have finished two of the short rows and I'll turn the work and continue back and forth working on those short rows. Okay so I've finished the short rows now of this yoke, start of the yoke, raglan yoke. So now we have more depth at the back than at the front of this cardigan, which will allow the collar to sit lower at the front and be more comfortable for wearing. The stitch count has increased at the same time. I've been increasing along the raglan line, adding yoke increase stitches. So now we have more stitches for the sleeves than at the top more for the fronts and more for the back. 
so here's my swatched my swatch my gauge swatch and I can check the row gauge and compare it with the row gauge on the unblock, unblocked garment to determine how much this will grow. If you're knitting in a superwash, you will find that the difference between your garment now and after blocking will be quite a lot. So it's worth checking to make sure that you don't knit it too long and you want it to fit right. So the pattern before dividing for the sleeve says after the increases, the set increases, to knit evenly until the armhole depth measures and gives measurements for your size. So if your row gauge is spot on, you'll probably not need to knit any extra rows to, to reach that point. It's good to check to be sure and even to try on at this point to see how it fits under your arms. Extra stitches will be cast on here, so you need to keep that in mind. So I usually try on after I've divided for the sleeves. So I'll show you that. So to measure the armhole depth, start in the center of the cast on stitches for the sleeve and just measure straight down. Allow for any extra growth that will happen during blocking and determine if you've knit enough there. I have, so I'm ready to divide for the sleeves. So the first step, oops, dropped a couple of stitches here. As per the pattern, is to knit across to the first marker. Then I'll be placing the sleeve stitches on waist yarn and holding them until I'm ready to knit the sleeves. I will cast on the underarm stitches required for my size, then knit across the back, stop at the marker, place the right sleeve stitches on waist yarn, cast on some more underarm stitches and then knit across. And then I'll be working the front and backs in one piece. So. I'll pause while I knit that first section. Okay, so I've knit the left front, the first section of the right side row, the next right side row for divide for sleeves up to the first marker. I will now remove that marker. And I have on a darning needle some waste yarn, a couple of, about a metre or something of some waste yarn there. I'm going to place all the sleeve stitches, including the raglan stitch, onto the waist yarn. So that stitch, pop that out of the way, and I'm just going to take each stitch off the knitting needle, place it onto the darning needle, and slide it down that waist yarn. I found a pretty green waist yarn that would be nice with my project. It's good to have a contrasting colour so it's easy to see and ideally a colour that you like since you'll be looking at it with your project for a bit but it doesn't really matter what it is. And just push these stitches around. So now I've placed all the sleeve stitches onto the yarn. I pick up that second raglan stitch and remove the marker. Now the first thing I'll do is secure the sleeve stitches by tying. And I want it to be loose enough that I can try on this garment after a few rows and just make sure that that's going to fit make sure the armhole depth will be long enough of course taking into account how much it's going to grow after blocking so that should be enough to do that this is where it gets pretty magical really i reckon when you separate for sleeves and it becomes an actual garment so 
now I need to do a cable cast on and cast on um, the number of stitches required for my size, which is um, backwards cable cast on nine stitches for my size. So with my right left hand, I've taken the working yarn, I'm looping it around my thumb and placing the needle through and casting on the stitches like that. It's very simple cast on. And I'm sure there's other ways to do this. I use this and it works for me, but there's more than one way to knit a sweater. <laughs> so I've got six, seven, eight, nine. Now I will knit across the back stitches. So this first sleeve is now held. Later on I'll pick up those stitches and knit down for the sleeve tube. So I'm going to knit across the back until I get to the second sleeve, the right sleeve. So I'm going to pause and I'll come back to you when I've done that. Okay, so now I've knit across the back stitches and I'm up to the second sleeve. So I'm going to place that first raglan stitch onto the waist yarn and all the right sleeve stitches as I did before. So I've placed all the sleeve stitches on the waist yarn. I'm up to that marker. Place a raglan stitch on the waist yarn. This will vary from pattern to pattern, but the pattern I'm working from instructs to do that. Secure the sleeve stitches and do the backwards cable cast on again for the additional underarm stitches. One, two, three, four, Seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to knit across the right front and I will have divided for the sleeves. Okay, I've knit across that front side, right side, and now we've got some little sleeves separated from the body. So I will purl back across that row and only be knitting the front and back stitches and across the cast on stitches that I have added on. Later when I come to do the sleeve, and I'll show you that, I will be picking up these stitches as well and incorporating those into the sleeve. So it's pretty exciting to get to this Point where it starts to feel like a garment. I'm going to knit a few rows and then I'm going to try it on. Hi, I'm back with my sleeves separated, partially knit Celestia and I've knit, continued on and knit a few front and back rows. So the sleeves are on their waist yarn and I just thought at this point I had a little try on. My needles are long enough that I should be able to try it on. If you don't have long enough needles, you can always put your project on waste yarn so that you can try it on so it's got length to get around. Let's see how I go. I probably should have put stoppers on the ends of my needles to be sure that that doesn't come off. Now, keep in mind that there will be front bands coming down, overlapping for the button. And yes. So I finished the body of the garment, continued knitting down 
from those underarm stitches to the length I wanted, which is a little bit cropped to the waist for me. Finish the ribbing and bound off. I haven't yet done the fronts. I'll do them last. So now I'm going to put the first set of sleeve stitches onto my needles. I'm going to work my sleeves using the magic loop, working it in the round. You might prefer to use double pointed needles. That's really up to you, personal preference. So I'll start by inserting the needle into each stitch, leaving the string or waist yarn attached. So I've worked my way around and have picked up all the stitches and next I will cut that waste yarn and just pull it through and just quickly double check to make sure I haven't dropped any stitches along the way. That looks good. So here are the nine stitches cast on for the underarm and they'll also be part of the sleeve. I'll pick these up for the sleeve. Because it's an odd number, I'll pick up four on this side and five on this side. So for round one, because I'm doing magic loop, I'll just pull that cable through and be ready to start working round one. I'll just quickly show you how I pick up these stitches. So, got one, two, three, four, and then the other one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to insert my needle through those two loops of the stitch and start knitting. So that's one, two, three, four. And then there is a little bit of a gap here between the first stitch and the cast on stitches. I just pull that nice and tight as I'm knitting. You can see it closes up quite well. Also later I'll use this tail when I'm weaving in the tail just to strengthen that and make sure that it looks nice and neat. So I've knit all around now. Here's those stitches that I cast on just before and now I'm going to not cast on, picked up from the cast on stitches. I'm going to pick up the final five stitches and then start working this project in the round. So poking the needle through, needing a stitch, one, two, three, four, Five. So that's the nine underarm stitches that I cast on when I started the body, when I separated the sleeves. And I'll just place a marker for the start of the round. And now I'll just knit around and around and around for the sleeves. This particular pattern includes some decreases for sleeve shaping so that they taper towards a cuff. So I work those as instructed in the pattern. Some of my patterns are worked even for the sleeve for a puffier effect or a looser sleeve. So it depends on how you like your sleeves to be and also on the pattern that you're following. So I'll just continue around and around and keep track of how many rounds I knit and 
my decreases. And I'll come back and show you the next step. I've made a little progress with the sleeve, the first sleeve, and just thought I'd stop and mention that I personally go up a needle size when I switch from working back and forth flat to knitting in the round. My gauge gets tighter when I work in the round. So I'm now using 4.5 millimeter needles or US seven, they are. And I had used a four millimeter US six for the body. So that's where swatching is important or just understanding your gauge. And at this point, I'm using a removable marker to mark the start of the round. And that way I don't have to worry about the stitch marker falling off when I get to the end. So I just move that up and I can see where the start of the round is. And it's a couple of days later, I've completed both sleeves and I'm ready to do the front bands. These will include buttonholes and also buttons on after. So the first band will be on the wearer's right side, the right button band, and this will include the holes and then I'll work this side, I'll block it first and then also on the buttons. So I'll give you a little demonstration of how I pick up the stitches. So I'm hoping to win yarn chicken with this one. This is how much I have left of a skein. I can crack into another one. I have one skein unwound, but I'd love to not use it, but I, I don't think I'll have quite enough for the two bands. We'll see. So I'm back to my four millimeter needles. I used the 4.5 for the sleeves. I did the ribbing on the 4.5. I don't mind a looser ribbing, but perhaps you would want to size down. It's really up to the pattern you're knitting and your own preferences. So I'll be picking up stitches from the bottom right side. And in this pattern, it then says to knit the first, pick up the stitches and purl the wrong side row. So I'm going to start by, basically I'll be inserting my needle through, it's a little bit hard to see on these end stitches, but here the edge has two loops, you'll be putting your needle through the two loops and then knitting that stitch. This pattern says do three stitches for every four. So I do one, two, three, skip the fourth, do one, two, three. This is approximate and will depend on your gauge. It's a pretty good guide. So I'll start with one, holding that end firmly for a bit, I'll tie that in later. So the second, two, and three, skip the fourth and go start again. One, two, Three. Oops, I didn't quite catch. Three. Getting a bit caught there. Skip the fourth, and now I'm past that little ribbing bit. One. Two. Three. Skip the fourth, and one, two, three.
tree. I'll just stop there for a moment. So you can see there's a neat line formed here. If you're not seeing that neat line, you might need to look at where you're picking up the stitches. On the other side, you can see a little, I don't know what to call it, a seam, a line of stitches. So you're aiming for this neat, consistent effect here. If you're not getting that, then maybe you're picking up stitches from other places. So this is a good guide. Just keep checking that as you go. So I've done three, skip the fourth and continue on. One. Two. Three. Skip the fourth and start again. So I've continued to pick up all the stitches along that front right band, button band, to show you up closely. So now I'll turn the work and purl the wrong side as per the pattern and work the front band ribbing. Okay, so I've just finished the buttonhole band, front band, and we'll work the second band on the left side, which I'll sew the buttons on. The buttonholes are quite simple yarn over buttonholes. And I'll start picking up the stitches from the collar this time and work my way down so that I'll be working, picking them up along the right side. Okay, so both button bands are done. This one with buttonholes, this one that I'll sew the buttons onto. So my next step is to block. I'll do that before I sew in any ends and before I put on the buttons and then I'll be ready to wear. And look, I made it. I didn't need to use my extra skein. Yay. So I have a nice one intact. Time for blocking. So I have some nice warm water, not too hot, just, just warm. And some wool wash in here. And I'll just submerge my garment. Push it in and then I'm just going to go away and leave it to soak for a little bit. I want to be careful not to stretch it out or agitate it too much since this will probably will felt if I was too vigorous. Just going to gently soak it, give it a rinse, gently squeeze out the excess water and then lay it out on a towel place another towel on top of it and roll, roll it up and squeeze any excess liquid that I can gently out of the garment. Then what I'll do with this one is lay out another towel, a dry one, and place a garment on the towel flat and leave it to dry. Usually I'll um, come back depending on how the weather is, but at some point and turn it over if it needs turning over. Um, yeah. And I'm back. And now I'm up to button selection. So all the time I was knitting this, I was imagining my bag of buttons, which is a collection of buttons that I find in thrift stores. And um, these ones, chopped off something. I used the fabric for something else and then kept these cute buttons and these would potentially be a good option for this garment. So yeah, occasionally um, I just buy buttons that I like. They have a, a nice collection. I think these 
green ones could be fantastic with this cardigan but I wanted to keep it fairly neutral so in my mind while I was knitting it I was imagining this color mother of pearl buttons and I knew I had a bunch of them which I do this size it would be enough and the perfect size however I thought in my mind that they were this more silvery color but they're more white so I just don't think they quite go with this cardigan so I've been digging around and um, like these beautiful glass ones I don't think they quite go either and I don't have enough these would be really cute but again I don't think the color is quite right so um, I've just been digging through some met metallic ones and found these very simple silver colored metal buttons and I think that they will do the job because I so much going on with this fantastic yarn um, and I want to keep it fairly neutral you know I think as I said a, a green or a color button would really pop on this cardigan but then it would limit how many things I could wear it with and I just want to keep this as a very much a neutral wear with anything kind of garment And done. I ended up going with these brass buttons that I have stashed away. Um, so not the first choice I had in mind when I was making this, but I do like that they're neutral and um, yeah, I think they go pretty well. I also sewed in one of my little amber labels and looking forward to wearing this and voila here it is on for my buttons done up and yeah, cropped which I like with wearing with a dress and um, or layers and it's pretty easy to extend the length of that if you want you can make the arm lengths longer or shorter pretty easily and yeah, I tend to like to wear mine, <clears throat> excuse me, buttons undone. It could be just a few undone at a time or the whole lot for more open layered look. Yay. And voila, we're done. Finished this lovely cardigan. So I hope that it answered some questions for you and demystified top-down raglan construction and even more so that you're now willing to give it a go. If there's anything that you felt like you would like to see more in depth, any of the techniques or anything else, even not relating to this garment, but to my other patterns, just let me know in the comments below and I'll take your suggestions on board for future videos. So I'll put links below, I'll link to the pattern that I used, which is a Celestia cardigan and also the Celestia pullover and to my patterns in general. Also, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, I'll put the link to that below. Newsletter subscribers get a 30% coupon code to use in my pattern store. So if you're new to my designs, that might be a Nice way to get started. And yeah, thanks for joining me.
Thank you.